Hi guys, my name is Gavin Peters and I'm a marine biology major at the College of Charleston and I absolutely love sharks. So Shark Allies and I have teamed up to give you this presentation all about these amazing creatures. So please follow along. All right, so first I wanna get into the question, what are sharks? So sharks are this kind of bony fish. They come from the family Elasmobronchi and they have been around for over 400 million years. That makes them older than dinosaurs and even older than trees. Now, instead of bones, sharks have this thing called cartilage. This is a kind of muscle tissue that makes up the majority of the shark's body and allows it to be so flexible. Now, sharks for the most part are cold-blooded. Now, being cold-blooded means that you your internal temperature is based off of the temperature of your surroundings, meaning that the shark's internal temperature will depend on the temperature of the water around them. Now, like other fish, sharks have fins and gills, and these gills are the openings in the side of their bodies that help them push water through their mouths and filter out oxygen for them to breathe. But unlike a lot of other fish, sharks do not have swim bladders. Swim bladders are things that fish use to help stay buoyant in the water as they swim through it. Uh, and instead of swim bladders, sharks have a lot of fatty oils in their livers. And these oils help, are what help the shark maintain buoyancy. Now, let's ask ourselves the question, why are sharks important? Well, the answer is that there are many answers. Sharks have been around for over 400 million years. That means they have done something right. Now, when you think of a shark, you usually think of this top predator at the top of the food chain, right? Well, for the most part, that thinking's correct. Sharks are usually the top predators of their environment, which means they have the unique job of keeping all the other species in check. And when they do this, that helps keep the ecosystem and the food chain healthy and in order. Now, there are over 500 species of shark, and each one plays a unique role in their own food chain. For example, you have these big apex predators like the tigers and the great white that eat all the bigger fish and pretty much anything they can. But you also have these zebra sharks and these nurse sharks that go around the ocean floor eating crustaceans, kind of acting as the cleanup crew. No matter which way you put it, sharks help keep our oceans healthy. Something kind of important to talk about is the fact that sharks need our help. Due to human interaction, a lot of shark species have been moved to endangered or critically endangered. And this happens for a number of reasons. One is bycatch in fishing nets, where lots of commercial fishermen will put lots of nets out in the water trying to catch the fish that they want. However, a lot of sharks will accidentally be caught in those nets and they will die by cause of those nets. Uh, it also is shark fishing and finning. That is where fishermen are actively trying to catch sharks, whether to chop off their fins for shark fin soup or catch them to use as ingredients in a lot of medicine and a lot of beauty products. Another thing is that global warming is affecting our sharks as well. The more greenhouse gases that we pump into the atmosphere, the more we actually heat up the earth. When you heat up the earth, you're actually heating up everything within it, including our oceans. And that disrupts the environments and everything that lives in them, like sharks. All right, now we're gonna move on to something a lot more fun, shark anatomy. So if you look at a shark, starting from the nose, going down to the tail, you got two dorsal fins. The first one is usually a lot bigger, and that's the one that you see sticking out of the surface. Uh, going down from the dorsal fins, you have the tail fin or the caudal fin. Now, depending on the environment of the shark, you can have either a homocircle or a heterocircle caudal fin. Heterocircle is what you see here on the tiger shark, and that is where the top and the bottom part of the tail are of unequal proportions. But a homocircle tail is where they're both equal proportions, and this is usually for your more open ocean shark, like a great white. Now, going along the belly from the nose to the tail, you have the two pectoral fins that stick out on the side, and those help guide the shark as it swims. From the pectoral fins going down, you have the pelvic fins. And if you were a boy shark, 
you would have two prongs sticking out of the pelvic fins. And I'm sure we can all guess what those prongs are, but in sharks, they're called claspers. So from the pelvic fins going down, you have the anal fins and the anal fin and the pelvic fins are both separated by the shark's anus. Both these fins help the shark stabilize while it swims. Uh, going back to the nose, sharks have these little tiny black dots. Those are called the ampullae of Lorenzini, and I'll get to those later. And what's interesting about sharks and most fish, they have this lateral line that runs down their side. And this is what helps the shark detect pressure changes and the motions in the waters around them. Sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. Those are our five senses. Did you know that sharks actually have a sixth sense? This is called the ampullae of Lorenzini. Now, these are those little tiny black dots all across the shark's nose and face. And these act as little sensors that can pick up even the smallest disruptions of electrical fields in the water. The electrical pulses that the shark picks up usually come from the shark's prey. And when the shark notices them, it allows them to pinpoint the location. These pulses come from any contraction of muscle, just like an injured fish thrashing around or even the heartbeat of a stingray under the sand. Something I'm sure you've all seen or probably collected with your family are shark teeth. Now, did you know that sharks have around five to 15 rows of teeth and they constantly regrow them as they're not attached to any root like ours. They're made to lose teeth and they'll lose around a tooth a week. Now, what's important about shark's teeth is that they're the only part of the shark that can be fossilized because like we touched on earlier, sharks are mostly made of cartilage, cartilage, not bone, and cartilage does not fossilize. Now, each shark has a unique style of tooth. You have the flat and dense teeth that are used to crush things. You have the sharp needle-like teeth that are used to hold on to prey. And then you have one of these little indentations on the side of teeth that look like little knives and these are serrated teeth and the bigger sharks use these to cut into prey and tear off chunks of meat now what's interesting about the tiger shark tooth is that it has both serration and a large curve it's letter w and this makes it perfect for cracking and open the shell of the tiger shark's favorite food sea turtles shark skin shark skin is really really cool they have what a unique kind of scale called denticles, and they almost act as micro teeth all going in one direction, and that's towards the tail. So that means that if you were to run your hand down a shark's body from the nose to the tail, it would be pretty smooth. But if you were to run your hand up the shark's body towards the nose, it would feel like rough sandpaper and you'd probably cut your hand. Now, these scales are shaped like this as a way to help decrease drag and turbulence while a shark swims, and this makes it a lot quieter and a lot faster. Like we touched on earlier, sharks don't have swim bladders. Instead, they have massive livers, and these massive livers act the same as livers do in all animals. That means they help convert food to energy, they store fat, and they aid in digesting. But something unique about shark livers is that Sharks actually have a lot of fatty oils in their livers, and this is how sharks control their buoyancy underwater. So now we're going to move on to a little something of shark show and tell, where I show you a shark and I tell you a little bit about it. Now, up first, we have the adorable nurse shark. These sharks tend to live mostly on the ocean floor where they feed on shellfish. And while they're relatively harmless and love the occasional pets, they are still sharks with strong jaws, so let's try not to lose a finger, okay? Another cool thing about these sharks is that they don't need to swim to breathe. They're one of the few sharks that can be found laying around in the sand looking like they're asleep. Next up, we have the sand tiger shark. Now, I know it looks really scary, but in reality, they're usually pretty calm. Now, the sand tiger shark, or gray nurse shark, is something that I'm sure you've seen before. They're very common in aquariums, but you've probably never seen a skinny one because you gotta keep on feeding them a lot of 
a lot of fish so they don't eat everything around them. These sharks are rather special as they have the ability to almost float motionless. And they do this by going to the surface, taking a gulp of air, holding that air in their stomachs, and this gives them the ability to float motionless as they watch and look for prey. Now, it's pretty easy to see how the lemon shark got its name. Scientists took one look at it, saw the color yellow, and said, lemon shark. Now, this yellow color is even more prominent in the juveniles and the babies because they use this color to help camouflage themselves in the mangroves, which is the place where the sharks go to give birth. Now, what is probably the most recognizable shark in the world? The hammerhead. These sharks have these giant hammer-like heads with a massive number of ampullae florenzini. What they do is they swing their heads around the ocean floor to try to sense any stingrays hiding under the sand. That's their favorite food. Once they've found them, they hold the stingray down with their head and they, let, and they bite one wing off and then they repeat it with the other wing. What's interesting about the hammerhead is that they have the ability to see 360 degrees at all times because of the eye placement on their heads. They can see up, down, behind them, to the side of them, in front of them at all times. It's crazy. Now, there are a lot of hammerhead species, but by far the largest is the great hammerhead. The largest ever recorded was around 20 feet long and almost 1,000 pounds. All right. It's the big one the largest predatory fish alive today, the great white shark, the ultimate apex predator. Now, unfortunately, these sharks have a reputation of being among the deadliest sharks in the world. And that's mostly due to their very curious behavior. They often mistake humans with their favorite prey, seals. And since they don't have hands to feel and figure out what something is, they take a bite out of it to taste whether or not it's food. Now, what's interesting about these sharks is that they display a very cool behavior called spy hopping. And that's where they'll stick their heads out of the water to see what's going on around the surface. These sharks are a kind of open water fish and they spend most of their adult life migrating, trying to find spots to mate and hunt seals. Wait, did you know? that there are warm-blooded sharks. Now, like I said earlier, most sharks are cold-blooded. However, there are five species that are warm-blooded. And that means that they're able to generate energy faster than cold-blooded animals. And they're able to maintain their internal temperature regardless of the waters around them. Now, these five shark species are the open ocean or pelagic sharks. And they are the great white, the short fin mako, the long fin mako, the poor beagle, and the salmon sharks. All of these sharks are all related and they belong to this family of mackerel sharks. And being warm blooded makes it so that these sharks can have lots of energy to accomplish their long migrations and navigate the open ocean. It's a bird, it's a plane. Nope, it's just a really, really fast shark. Now, similar looking to the great white, here we have its smaller, slimmer cousin, the mako shark. This is the world's fastest shark, reaching speeds of around 30 to even 40 miles per hour underwater. They use this great speed to help catch the usual prey of swordfish and tuna, both of which are also very fast fish. Next up is my personal favorite, the tiger shark. Now they get their name from these tiger-like stripes that go along their sides. When they're younger, the shark's stripes are super apparent and they act as kind of camouflage to help the shark hide from predators. When tiger sharks get big enough, they lose their spots a little bit. They start to fade and they become the apex predator of the area. They have been called the garbage cans of the sea because they will literally eat anything in front of them. This can range from leather jackets, license plates, and there was even a full suit of armor found inside a tiger shark. Okay, here's a fish I'm sure you're all glad is gone. The Megalodon, the biggest shark to have ever lived. The Megalodon went extinct around 2.6 million years ago, which is lucky for us as it grew to about 60 feet in length and possibly weighed up to 50 tons. That's around 100,000 pounds, which is way too much shark for any of us to handle. 
Now we're able to get these size estimates from the only fossil records that we have of this shark, the teeth. Megalodon teeth, which are up to seven inches in length, have been found in fossilized whale bone. This helped paleontologists determine that these massive sharks probably hunted massive whales, much like how its close relative, the great white, hunts seals today. Here we have the blue shark. Now this shark gets its name from the blue coloring on the top side of its body. This is actually a common feature for most sharks and fish, and it's a technique called counter shading. And that is where the top side is dark, so that when you're looking from below, the top side is darker to match the darkness of the ocean floor. And when you're looking from above, the belly side is really light, so to match with the light shining through the surface from the moon or the sun. Now, a fun thing about blue sharks is that they're called the wolves of the sea. Now, sailors gave them this nickname because they will travel in groups and follow behind ships to catch anything that may happen to go overboard. The thresher shark is actually one of the coolest looking sharks around. They're pretty easy to tell apart from other sharks as their tail is as long as two thirds of their body. Now they use this almost 10 foot tail to swim into schools of fish. They swing their tail like a whip, they stun the fish, and then the thresher shark comes around and eats the stunned and helpless fish. Now, these sharks are often found in the open ocean, and that's what's really cool about these fish is that they will actually jump fairly high out of the water, much to the amusement of a fisherman who got one on their hook. So we already discussed the biggest shark to have ever lived. Now let's talk about the biggest shark that lives today. The whale shark is one of the three planktonic feeding species of shark. That means they solely eat plankton and small fish, never humans. Now, this giant can grow anywhere between 18 and 33 feet, and they can have a mouth as big as four feet wide. These sharks do have teeth, up to 3,000 of them in fact, but they're so tiny in the back of their throat that they use them as filters for the small things that they do eat. This is probably one of the most interesting sharks that we'll talk about. This is the bull shark. Now, they get their name from having a larger than normal level of testosterone in their body. Testosterone is the hormone that makes something aggressive and ferocious, much like this bull shark. But that's not all. The scariest part about this shark is that it can actually go into any body of water. Yes, bull sharks have the unique ability to travel into rivers and streams, which unfortunately increases the number of times these sharks and humans run into each other. Now, I must add that these sharks are not actively going out looking to eat people. We're not on the menu. They're just wild animals and we happen to go swimming in their homes. The second largest living shark is the basking shark. Like the whale shark, it's a planktonic feeder, making them harmless to humans. And they're often found at the surface with their mouths agape sucking in plankton. Now, this tactic is actually called ram feeding. That's where the shark swims at this continuous speed with its mouth open and engulfs the food and water around it. Whoa, that's gotta be the creepiest looking shark I've ever seen in my entire life. And that's the goblin shark. They live towards the bottom of the ocean where there's almost no visible light, which is good because I don't wanna see that thing. Now, the goblin shark is almost like pinkish white in color, and that's because they don't need to hide from prey where there's no light. And they can grow up to about 12 feet and they have this super long snout, which is covered in the ampullae of Lorenzini, much like the hammerhead. Now this is how they find prey in the depths of the ocean where there's no light. Next up, we have the oceanic white tip shark. This is a kind of pelagic shark that you can only find in the open ocean. And that's because these sharks tend to hunt at depths of around 490 feet below surface. That's not some place that humans tend to hang around, nor is it close to shore. Now, they often exhibit a almost dog-like curiosity and have hence been given this nickname by sailors of sea dogs. The black tip reef shark is a very common species of shark. They're usually found in warm waters around coral reefs and in schools. When I say schools, I don't mean that they're sitting down with a pen, a paper, and listening to their teacher and taking notes. No, I mean that they're found in groups of other sharks. But what's interesting about the black tip reef shark is that their schools are gender specific. 
that means that the males will swim with males and the females will only swim with females until mating season when they will intermingle. Now, these sharks should not be confused for the much larger black tip shark. While they share the same color of tip on their fins, the size difference is very noticeable. The oldest living vertebrate on earth at around 400 years old, the Greenland shark is ancient. Now, they also just so happen to be one of the largest sharks around, growing up to 21 feet. And they are found up in the Arctic Ocean around Greenland, hence the name. The Greenland shark is part of a group called sleeper sharks. They get this name from swimming very, very slowly, less than one miles per hour on average. So something kind of depressing to talk about is the fact that all of those beautiful species I just mentioned, most of them are critically endangered, and that's due to a lot of human impacts. Through global warming, pollution, overfishing, and shark finning, humans have caused large amounts of shark populations to drop drastically. If you're angered by what's happening to these amazing creatures, I suggest you go to sharkallies.org, click the Get Involved tab, and press the Take Action Now button to see what you can do. All right, that brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, before I go, I just want to reiterate how important sharks are to our planet. They help keep our oceans healthy and maintain balance within the ecosystem's populations. And they have been around for a lot longer than humans, and they deserve a lot more respect than what they have been getting. I highly suggest that you go to sharkallies.org and find out what you can do to help. Thank you.